In this lesson, we are carrying on looking at neural pathways and talking specifically about signal transduction in neurons. Okay, here are our subject matter dot points. Now, signal transduction at a molecular level means that we're sending the signal somewhere or the passage of the signals. That's what that real, that phrase signal transduction means. Now, there are electrical signals using positive and negative charges from the ions in the solution. There's also chemical signals that we can send and they use uh, chemical molecules as the messengers to pass on. We understand that idea. Now, signal transduction um, happens with both chemical and electrical signals and they alternate as they flow between neurons. The neuron will send an electrical signal and then it will be translated into a chemical signal to assist with the next adjoining cell. Now the next adjoining cell might be a neuron, it might also be a muscle. Quite a lot happening here, okay? Now a nerve impulse travels along the surface of the membrane and it has a high impedance to charge. So it is allowing that charge to move because those ions are charging, uh, are moving through the, the membrane. And it uses chemical messages to bridge the gap between these two neurons. At the axon membrane, right? Remember, this is the axon. Charged ions are flowing across the membrane all the way down the axon, so in, this direction um, to change the charge on either side of the membrane and this is the electrical signal when it gets to the axon terminal at the end point it must jump the gap right and this is the gap we're talking about those nerves don't actually touch there is a gap in between them and it does this using a chemical messenger so it spits out a chemical messenger it's called a neurotransmitter and it stimulates the electrical signal to to start up again in the next neuron now we talk about an action potential and it's about the potential of the membrane to create that electrical signal and it relies on the differences in the chemical charge on the inside and the outside of the membrane. So we can see that there's a positive charge on the outside and a negative charge on the inside of the membrane. Also looks like that, right? Now the potential is the way to describe the movement of the charged particles across the membrane of a neuron. The charged particles move in and out of the membrane down the cell like a bit of a wave, okay? And they're gonna go in this direction in this case. Ions are atoms which have lost or gained electrons, we understand that, and these are all dissolved in the intra and in and the extracellular fluid, okay? And the main players we're talking about here are sodium and potassium. They both have a positive charge. So the membrane proteins play an important role with this because they're allowing those ions to go in and out as well. There are four stages to this. There's a resting stage, depolarization, repolarization, and then a refractory period, okay? So four different stages, and the action potential of the electrical signal is actually just ions flowing in and out of the cell membrane in that wave pattern, remember. Okay, stick with me. In resting, there's a negative charge outside the membrane and the positive outside. During this first phase of depolarization, there's a voltage-gated sodium channel and sodium ions rush into the cell, all right? So this is into or inside. So the sodium is rushing into the cell and now outside is actually more negative, okay? Because there are fewer positive charges. So then the sodium gets shut. Then in the next phase, repolarization, the voltage gate potassium channels open up and we'll see the potassium flow inside uh, sorry, flow outside the cell, right? This is the outside. So the potassium then flows outside. So the negative charge inside the cell returns. Okay, we've repolarized it and then the gate's shut. In the refractory period, it's kind of a recovery period and no charge in polarity um, can, can happen until they've all moved back to their original starting positions. So the sodium potassium protein pump actually has to actively do that. So it uses energy to push three sodium out and two sodium back in to start it all again. And this refractory period needs to happen really, really quickly, but relatively speaking, it's slow. So that's why nerves can only fire in one direction. This is what the action potential looks like if we're talking about, say, what's going on with the charges. And we can see that the, we can actually measure the potential and the difference in the voltage there, because it is an electrical signal. And we see during the depolarization, it increases. Repolarization, it goes down to the point where it can't do anything and then it has to rebuild itself. All right. 
chemical uh, the chemical messages happen at the synapse so once the action potential has reached the end of that neuron so at the axon terminal it triggers the release of a chemical signal which is that neurotransmitter and it transmits it between the two in this area called the synapse the synapse is that gap between the neurons okay or between the neuron and an effector like a muscle now an action potential is the pre, in the presynaptic cell so the bit leading up to the synapse it triggers these vesicles right remember these are these vesicles and they're spitting out these neurotransmitters and they merge or they swim essentially across the little gap and they merge with these little chemical receptors on the other neuron in this case okay so they, the neurotransmitter diffuses across what's called the synaptic cleft, which is that synapse or that gap, and it binds to the receptors on the postsynaptic cell. Okay, and the binding of that signal molecule, you know, to the receptor triggers that signal to continue in this direction. Right, signal transduction triggers the opening of all these sodium chloride channels, which in turn then kicks off that action potential in this particular cell. So you'll see this drawn in so many ways. The important part is that the electrical signal is coming down here in the presynaptic uh, neuron. These vesicles are then triggered to go and actually spit out the chemical messages. The chemical messages flow across the synaptic cleft. They eventually bind with a receptor here, right? They have to be specific to that molecule. And then once that happens, all these different channels can then open and the electrical signal can then flow in that direction again. This is a nice step-by-step -step section of it, and there's some more uh, elaborations in your PowerPoint as well when you get a hand of that. Okay, neurotransmitters come in various forms, and you may have heard of some of these before. Um, ones we hear about all the time are dopamine, we know about adrenaline, um, you might have also heard of serotonin, and definitely endorphins. And they play different roles for different pathways that need to be signaled. Um, and you can see kind of some of these here, euphoria, so a lot of happiness, serotonin's involved in mood and can often be um, quite lower, uh, substantially lower in people with depression. Not always though. Um, and the receptors that are taking on board these molecules have to be specific to that pathway. And we're going to learn more about those uh, receptors and chemical messengers when we talk about the hormone uh, system or the endocrine system. So here's our subject matter. Please make sure you do a bit of reading and this is quite a complex idea. So make sure you go watch a few videos and some animations and, and draw yourself a little map of what is going on with those electrical signals and the chemical signals.